Every day, we engage in activities that seem safe, like riding a bike, traveling by car, and activities at work. But any of these activities can turn deadly. Here are five such stories of unbelievably tragic accidents that ended in the demise of unsuspecting people. Fasten your seatbelts and let's get started. Our first story is, pro hockey player's case was a 14-year mystery. In the beautiful Austrian Alps lies a unique and lesser known tourist destination, accessible only by gondola or a challenging hike. This destination is home to the Stubai Glacier Ski Resort, famous for its skiing on a glacier. In August 1989, a young Canadian named Duncan McPherson visited the resort while on vacation, before starting a new career as a hockey coach in Scotland. After a successful first snowboarding lesson, Duncan planned to practice on his own. Unfortunately, as he snowboarded down the slope, he fell and broke his leg. Due to the fog, nobody noticed his distress, and he couldn't make it back to the resort on his own. Duncan's parents, concerned when he failed to show up for work, launched an extensive search throughout Europe, distributing missing person flyers and investigating every lead. Finally, in 2003, after 14 years of searching, a resort employee discovered Duncan's body emerging from the melting ice on the glacier. The resort claimed that Duncan had accidentally fallen into a crevasse and died, but evidence of his mutilation suggested otherwise. It's believed that an employee operating a snowcat tractor accidentally ran over Duncan and mutilated his body. In a panic, the employee disposed of Duncan's remains in a crevasse and covered it up with snow to avoid responsibility for his death. No one was held accountable for Duncan's death, as the statute of limitations had expired by the time his body was found. The tragedy remains a haunting mystery, leaving Duncan's family with unanswered questions and shattered hearts. Next we have the worst paramedic screw-up. On the early morning of April 27, 2006, tragedy struck the lives of two families in rural Michigan. A horrific car accident involving a tractor trailer and a van carrying university students resulted in the death of five students. Among the deceased was 18-year-old Whitney Sarek. Devastatingly, her family received a phone call informing them of her passing. The family of Laura Van Rin was notified that their daughter was seriously injured, and they rushed to the hospital to be with her during her recovery. As Laura recovered and the bandages were removed, the Van Rin family felt something was off, but the hospital staff assured them that an accident victim's look and demeanor can change after such a horrific accident. However, when the woman identified as Laura Van Rin was asked her name, she responded with Whitney Sarek, not Laura Van Rin. Both the Sarek and the Van Rin families were thrown into a whirlwind of emotions, grappling with the loss of Laura while celebrating Whitney's miraculous survival. The heart-wrenching saga of mistaken identity would forge a bond between the two families, leading to the parents writing a book sharing their experiences in unwavering hope. The accident prompted changes in Michigan state protocols to prevent such mix-ups in the future. The truck driver responsible for the collision received a prison sentence, while the lives of both families were forever altered by the profound tragedy and unexpected reunion. Next we have horrific accident caught on live TV. Harry Houdini, a famous escape artist, was known for escaping seemingly impossible situations. But there was one stunt that Houdini failed to complete and refused to try again, escaping from a buried coffin. Fast forward to 1990, a daring 32-year-old magician named Joe Burris sought to conquer this very same dangerous stunt. He believed that he would become the next Houdini and saw this as his chance to prove it. On a Halloween night, Joe, dressed in a white tuxedo, arrived at Blackbeard's Family Fun Center in Fresno, California with his family. A large crowd had gathered to witness his heavily advertised stunt, which was broadcasted live on TV and radio. With confidence, Joe climbed onto the impromptu stage and passionately addressed the audience. He planned to be buried alive under three feet of dirt and four feet of wet cement, outdoing Houdini's attempt. Despite warnings, Joe was determined to prove himself. Shackled and placed inside a see-through plastic coffin, the coffin was lowered into a seven-foot pre-dug hole. Once inside, Joe gave the signal to proceed. The audience and his family watched anxiously as dirt and cement filled the hole. After just a few minutes, the entire area drops down about a foot. Realizing what happened, desperate efforts were made to rescue him, but they were futile, and Joe perished. An investigation revealed he had inadequately tested his plastic coffin against the weight of wet cement, and it broke, burying him alive under the dirt and cement. His overconfidence and lack of preparation led to a doomed mission. 
And now we have DIY. In the remote northern tip of Maine, near the Canadian border, lies the quaint rural town of Van Buren. Home to around 2,000 people, the residents are rugged and competent, having spent most of their lives in Maine. Van Buren had remained unknown to the rest of the world until 2019, when a man named Ronald Sear put it on the international headlines. Ronald Sear had served in the Air Force during the Korean War before returning to Van Buren, where he led a modest life in a two-story house near town. He started a successful tool-selling business, utilizing his love and skill for craftsmanship. In 2019, at the age of 65, Ronald still lived in the same property and ran his tool-selling business from his work shed. Life seemed content until one fateful summer morning when he noticed that some of his tool bins were mysteriously missing tools. He wondered if he had forgotten to restock or miscounted, but he couldn't find the tools anywhere on his property. Concerned about potential theft, he reported the incident to the police, but they didn't take it seriously. Determined to protect his property, Ronald researched and implemented various security measures, including tripwires with bells and do-it-yourself home defense systems. The tool theft ceased, which validated his efforts in preventing further incidents. However, on Thanksgiving Day, a frantic and injured Ronald made a distress call to the police. Upon arriving at his residence and following a blood trail, they found him sitting in the kitchen, wounded and in shock. An accidental booby trap part of Ronald's elaborate security system had been triggered, shooting him. The police searched the rest of the house and discovered other gun booby traps strategically placed throughout the property. Ronald had inadvertently activated one of them, leading to his tragic demise. The investigation couldn't determine whether Ronald had faced a professional thief or if his paranoia and imagination had created a non-existent threat. His death was ruled an accident, leaving the true motive behind his tool disappearance and his booby traps a mystery. Van Buren returned to its peaceful obscurity after the headlines faded away, but the story of Ronald Sear would forever be a haunting reminder of the dangers of excessive fear and the unintended consequences of extreme security measures. Finally, we have Magellan. If you venture into the waters just off the coast of a bird in Scotland and sail eastward for about seven hours, you'll encounter a colossal man-made structure rising from the ocean. Known as Magellan, this offshore oil rig rises 100 feet out of the water and will remain in place until the oil in the area has been extracted. The brave individuals who work on rigs like Magellan often work for weeks or months at a time and are known as roughnecks. They hold one of the most perilous jobs in the world. In the year 2000, a 41-year-old father of two named Gordon Moffat worked as a roughneck on the Magellan rig, primarily responsible for maintenance on the drill. These offshore rigs are generally efficient, but breakdowns occur frequently. For drilling companies, every minute of downtime means lost revenue, so repairs must be carried out immediately, regardless of the time, weather, or conditions. One fateful night on October, Gordon had just returned to his quarters at the end of the day when he received a call on his radio, summoning him to fix a problem that halted the drill. Being an experienced roughneck, he didn't mind the late night call and swiftly prepared to head out. He reached the main deck, the expansive metal platform in the center of the rig through which the drill passed on its way to the ocean. The maintenance task required him to descend to the platform below the main deck, attach a harness to himself, and be hoisted up towards the deck above. The harness was fed through a 10-inch hole in the main deck called a mouse hole, attached to Gordon, and he was hoisted up. After making the repairs, he gave the signal to the main deck crew to lower him back down. The main deck signaled the winch operator, who made a disastrous mistake. He forgot to switch the direction of the winch, so instead of lowering Gordon, he continued to raise him toward the upper deck. Panic and fear filled Gordon as he screamed for the hoist operator to stop the winch. But the loud winds drowned out his pleas. The situation escalated as Gordon continued to ascend, and the main deck crew frantically tried to signal the hoist operator to reverse the winch's direction. In a desperate attempt to get the hoist operator's attention, one of the main deck crew members dialed a nearby phone connected to the hoist operator's station. Finally, hearing the urgency in the phone call, the hoist operator halted the winch. However, it was too late. Gordon had already been pulled to the entrance of the mouse hole, and due to the harness restricting his movements, he couldn't position himself vertically to slip through the hole. As a result, he was pulled horizontally into the 10-inch hole, and his body tragically broke in half. The winch was stopped, but Gordon had already perished, with only a section of his torso making it through the hole. An investigation revealed that Gordon's company had neglected several safety protocols, leading to their conviction and a substantial fine. Additionally, they paid an undisclosed amount to Gordon's family. 
This heartbreaking incident serves as a grim reminder of adhering to safety regulations in hazardous work environments like offshore oil rigs. I hope you enjoyed hearing about these stories as much as I enjoyed sharing them. Mr. Ballin is an amazing storyteller. Be sure to watch his videos. The links to each of the videos mentioned here are in the description. If you enjoyed this content, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any new videos. Until next time, stay safe and keep your eyes peeled for the strange, dark, and mysterious.